Welcome to this lecture on deemed supplies of goods. The basic charge to VAT is legislated within Article 2.1 of the VAT Directive. And specifically, Article 2.1a provides a supply of goods by a taxable person for consideration shall be subject to VAT. So it essentially means if we have a supplier selling goods to a customer and that customer pays consideration to the supplier, we have a VAT supply. Output tax is due from the supplier. Now the supplier would have originally bought those goods from their supplier, let's say a manufacturer. Now as the supplier bought goods, they would have recovered input tax on their purchase. And everything seems to be working fine here. So the suppliers bought goods, recovered input tax. The suppliers sold goods, received consideration, and accounted for output tax. So the VAT system works. The customer ultimately bears the output tax VAT charged. Now the problem will occur where there is no consideration. If there is no consideration, then Article 21A will not apply, and the VAT system potentially breaks down. We have a supplier who has recovered input tax on goods. The goods are then, let's say, given away. And the customer has those goods, and no one has borne VAT on those goods. The supplier has recovered the VAT. The customer has the goods, and they have not borne the VAT on those goods. Article 21A cannot apply because there is no consideration. When there is no consideration, we have to consider the deemed supply rules. And specifically, Article 16 provides that where there is no consideration, output tax can still be due. Now, Article 16 states that the application by a tax or person of goods forming part of his business assets for his private use or that of his staff, or their disposal free of charge, a gift, for example, or more generally, their application for purposes other than business, shall be treated as a supply of goods for consideration, where the VAT on those goods or component parts thereof was wholly or partly deductible. So this is Article 16, and Article 16 creates an output tax charge even when there's no consideration. It's a deemed supply. Now, Article 16 is mandatory. The word shall in Article 16 means that the member states must adopt this provision. Now, there are various elements said to this. Uh, so the application by a person of goods from a public business asset, so it's got to be in your business to start with. And they might have taken the goods out for private use or given the goods to staff or just given the goods uh, to customers. This is what they're after in here. There's no consideration. But most importantly, for Article 16 to apply, that last three or four words in Article 16, wholly or partly deductible, the input tax must have been deducted on purchase. And when you've deducted on purchase and you then give them away, this is when Article 16 kicks in. Now, if we have got a deemed supply, we have to consider Article 74 for valuation. Now, Article 74 provides that the value of the deemed supply is normally the purchase price of those goods. Now, this effectively claws back the input tax originally recovered on those goods. There are further layers to Article 74, but in the majority of cases, uh, it will be the original purchase price. So let's just put this into an example. So I've got a jeweller. This jeweller is a taxable person. The jeweller is going to buy a watch from a watchmaker. And let's say the watch costs a thousand euros plus 20% VAT. Now the jeweller, being a taxable person, will recover input tax of €200 Euros on that watch purchase. Now, if the jeweller was to sell that watch to a customer, then obviously they would account for output tax on the sale to that customer. But in this particular situation, the jeweller doesn't sell this watch to a customer. The jeweller gives it to his wife, maybe on her birthday. Now, here we've got a situation where Article 16 applies. We've got an Article 16 deemed supply, We've got goods being acquired, input tax recovered, and then the goods are given away. There's no consideration. Now, if it wasn't for Article 16, 
uh, there would be a problem with the VAT system because the jeweller's wife would have a watch and no one's born VAT on that watch. The jeweller's recovered the VAT that they've been charged. So hence the Article 16 deemed supply rules. Output tax will be payable by the jeweller on the gift of that watch to his wife. Article 74 will provide the valuation of that deemed supply and it will be a net value of a thousand euros meaning that output tax of 200 euros is payable by the jeweller to the authorities via their VAT return. Now Article 16 does contain a couple of exceptions to the deemed supply rules. It states, however, the application of goods for business use as samples or as gifts of small value shall not be treated as a supply of goods for consideration, i.e. the deemed supply rules won't apply. The gift to the jeweller's wife would not fall within this exception as it was not given for business purposes. So therefore it's not relevant whether it's a sample or a gift of small value and because this must be given initially for business purposes. You don't give a watch to your wife for business purposes. So the deemed supply on the gift to the wife of the watch would definitely apply. The exceptions wouldn't kick in. If, however, the watch was given to an important customer as a thank you for past business and are hoping for more business, then it would be given for a business purpose. So is it within the deemed supply rules? Well, it depends. Is that watch a sample or is that watch a gift of small value? Now, in this particular case, I think it's unlikely to be either. Um, but that's the thought process. It must be given for a business purpose to be within this exception. And then additionally, it must either be a sample or a gift of small value. The EMI Group case, a UK case, considered the Article 16 samples and small gifts exceptions to the deemed supply of goods rules. Now, the EMI gave away records and CDs to DJs, disc jockeys. Now, UK authorities did not regard these as samples as they were not given to potential customers. The DJs weren't going to buy more records. They were just being given them to play on their radio stations. So the UK didn't regard them as proper samples because they weren't given to people that were likely to buy more. The UK authorities didn't regard them as small gifts either. In the UK, the small gifts rules is that anything under £50 is regarded as a gift of a small value, but that is extended because if a series of gifts is given to the same person in a 12-month period, this series of gifts are grouped together and then compared to the £50 limit. So, for example, the initial gift was, let's say, £30, and then six months later another gift of, say, £40 was given, you'd have to consider the two together. And on that second gift, there would be a deemed supply on the value of the two gifts. And that's the way the UK has interpreted these small gifts exemptions. Every member state will be different, uh, but that's how the UK interpreted it. Uh, and this is a UK case, the EMI Group case. Now, EMI accounted for output tax on their deemed supplies in accordance with the UK law. Now, after many years of accounting for output tax on the deemed supplies, EMI decided to question whether UK law was in accordance with Article 16 of the VAT Directive. They're effectively seeking to apply the principle of direct effect. If the VAT Directive meant that their gifts of CDs, etc., were within the small gifts exemption or samples, then there should be no deemed supply. And if that's what the directive says, it will override uh, the UK law. I EMI group could rely on the directive and they would not have to account for output tax. Indeed, they could go back and recover the output tax they had been accounting for. The ECJ considered this case and they held uh, that the gifts were quite clearly for business purposes. There's only one reason why EMI would be giving CDs, etc., to a disc jockey, and that would be to promote their business. It would be for a business purpose. The ECJ then defined a sample, a very important definition, as a specimen of a product which is intended to promote the sales of that product and which allows the characteristics and qualities of that product to be assessed without resulting in final consumption, 
other than where the final consumption is inherent in such promotional transactions. So a very important um, definition there given by the ECJ. Now in conclusion, the ECJ thought that the UK was wrong to restrict the samples exceptions to gifts to potential customers. It was quite clear that the DJs would be playing these CDs on their radio stations and that a wider market would be hearing those songs, etc. And this would encourage further sales of those albums, songs, etc. So this was a sample. EMI were trying to promote further sales of their product. Now, not that it mattered, but the ECJ also went on to consider the small gifts exemption. Now, they held that the £50 rule in the UK was a fair application of the gifts of small value provision. Now, this was providing that as long as the person was an individual when considering a series of gifts to the same person, then that was fine. Now, the difference there was previously the UK had regarded a person as an organisation. So if, for example, you gave your product to, let's say, five employees of a customer, then that was just one person uh, for this test. Whereas the ECJ has said no persons for this small gifts exemption. It would be reasonable if you considered individuals. So you've got five individuals and five lots of £50 to play with effectively. But so it wasn't entirely relevant to this case, um, but it's a useful comment on whether the UK exception uh, on this small gifts rule was valid. And it was held uh, to be valid with that minor clarification on what a person is on this series of gifts rules. So the MI was a very good case uh, for the taxpayer. Now let's consider a practical application uh, of these provisions. So here we've got a golf ball manufacturer and they've produced a new golf ball and they're very keen for their customers uh, to see this new golf ball they've just developed. So they're going to hold a golf day and they're going to invite potential and existing customers along. Now at this golf day, uh, each attendee is going to get given a box of 12 of these new golf balls to try that day and obviously to take away and use when they play golf away from today's event. Now the golf ball manufacturer obviously wants to make this a very good day. So what they do, they buy in lots of golf umbrellas. And then every attendee, not only will they get golf balls, they'll get given a golf umbrella. Now the golf manufacturer will recover input tax on the purchase of those golf umbrellas. And the question is, does Article 16 apply to the gift of the golf balls and the gift of the umbrellas? I think it's fair to say that the gift of the golf balls is very likely to fall within the samples exception. These are products that the golf manufacturer makes. They are trying to get their potential and existing customers to try theirs, their golf balls. They want to get more purchases from this. So I think the golf balls, it would be fair to say, are samples and they would not be subject to Article 16. There will be no output tax due on the gift of those golf balls. The umbrellas, however, they're a different matter. They cannot be regarded as samples because the golf ball manufacturer doesn't make the golf umbrellas. The big question is, do those umbrellas fall within the small gifts exception? Now that depends on what that member state has done for this particular area, small gifts. The UK, we've got a £50 limit and the golf umbrellas are quite likely to be under the £50. So in the UK, this probably wouldn't be a deemed supply because of the £50 limit. In other member states, they may have lower interpretations of the small gifts rules. So you'd have to consult with the local legislation to see whether those umbrellas fall within the small gifts exceptions. If they do, there's no deemed supply. If they do not, then the golf manufacturer would have to account for output tax on the gift of those umbrellas. Now, in the case of Pideong, a Dutch builder bought some exempt land. Once he bought it, he obtained planning permission and built two houses on the land. He kept one of the houses as his own residence and sold the other home. Now, as he had reclaimed input tax on all the building materials, 
he accounted for output tax on the Article 16 deemed supply on the materials used in constructing his own residence. The VAT on the deemed supply was equal to the input tax reclaimed. Article 74 gives the valuation principles there. Now, see, there's no need to consider Article 16 in respect of the property that he sold, and because obviously there's consideration, and Article 21A would kick in, and there would be that to consider on the sale of that house. But on the house that he kept for his own purposes, then obviously there's no consideration. So we have to have these Article 16 rules to effectively claw back the input tax that he had recovered on the building materials of that particular property. Now, the tax authority wanted to take it a step further. They decided that the builder should also account for output tax on the value of the land. Now, this would obviously make the deemed supply a lot, lot higher. Now, the case went up to the ECJ and the ECJ disagreed uh, with the tax authority. Now, the reason being is that under Article 16, there has to be input tax recovery in the first place. If there's not, uh, then Article 16 just cannot apply. Now, as the builder did not pay that on the purchase of the land, then there could be no deemed supply on the value of the land. It's a very important case uh, for Article 16. There must be input tax recovered on the purchase of the goods in question for you to even think about whether Article 16 will apply on the gift or extraction of those goods. Let's consider the optional deemed supply rules. Now, Article 18 gives member states the option of treating a number of further transactions as deemed supplies. These are not mandatory. So whether these provisions are implemented or not, and how exactly they are implemented, is very much left up to the individual member state. Article 18 can cover partially exempt traders using own employees to produce something that would ordinarily be bought from a taxable person. It can also cover a trader taking goods from their economic activity to their non-taxable activities. It can also cover traders ceasing to be a taxable person. If you've bought goods whilst you're a registered person and you've recovered input tax on those goods, and then let's say you cease trading or your supplies drop below the deregistration threshold for that member state, then you can come out of the VAT system. But you're coming out of the VAT system with goods that you have recovered VAT on. And some member states have introduced a rule whereby that if you do deregister and you deregister holding goods that you have already recovered input tax on whilst you were a taxable person, then there's a deemed supply on those goods. The valuation rules uh, for Article 18 will still be under Article 74, so generally purchase price. Well, that concludes uh, the lecture on the mandatory Article 16 and the optional Article 18 deemed supply rules.